guys and welcome back. It's another Alternative Tuesday and today we're playing with ABS plastics. Well the way this all came about is I got some plastics from Omicron Plastics here in Canada and uh, it's a good local company and I wanted to play with them on the show and come up with a few projects, something a little different other than working with the wood. Now, I've never worked with ABS before, so this is going to be a learning process for me too. But hopefully, as we go along, we'll all learn something from it and we'll end up with some great fun projects at the end of it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take you over to the bench. I want to show you the product and we'll move forward for there or from there with the project and cutting some of the pieces for what I have in mind today. Well, what I have here is the ABS blocks of plastic and you can see it comes in multiple colors. It actually comes in more colors than this, but this is what I have for now to work with. Um, so I've run this through the jointer just to make sure that it had a nice square edge on two of the surfaces that were perpendicular to each other and I also wanted to see how it sort of reacted to the jointing and I tell you it, uh, it acted fantastically there was no issues there was no problem there was no tearing out there was no gouging it gave a nice smooth surface dead flat and when I jointed the other side I was able to get a nice crisp edge here and a perfectly 90 degree perpendicular surface to work with and uh, I was actually very pleased with the way it reacted to the blades of the tools. So for, ta for today, for the project, I'm going to be using primarily the red block and the blue block. And what we want to do to start off with with the project is I want to cut some quarter inch strips off of one edge so that we end up with a few quarter inch thick strips of each color here. Well, now that I have a few pieces cut, what I'm going to do is take these quarter inch thick pieces, I'm going to rip them so that they're three quarters of an inch wide, and I need five pieces that are six inches long. So that'll be your quarter inch by three quarters wide by six inches long, and you need five of those. I've got my six inch long pieces and I've also cut some opposing color. Uh, in my case, I've chosen blue and red, obviously. And I've taken this blue plastic, quarter of an inch thick, I've cut it to half an inch wide and I've beveled the ends at 30 degrees where this longest edge is three and a half inches. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these down onto our strips here, just like this. One in the middle, one at the sides, or one at each end. And I think we're gonna bring this in. Let me just measure here. Yeah, that looks about good. Half an inch in from each end, and this one here will be centered. We're gonna space each of these red ones out evenly probably about a sixteenth of an inch gap in between each one and then we're going to use a little bit of CA glue to glue the whole thing together. So a little tip on the assembly when you have multi-part pieces like this is you want to find something that will replace your hands to free them up for other operations and for that I've got an old framing square here and I've got it clamped on the bench and that's going to help me get all these edges aligned as well as keeping it square. So I've placed a mark across here at a quarter of an inch and a little tick mark here at half an inch on each one. I'm going to use a 1 16th inch spacer and all I'm going to do is use a little drop of CA glue on each of these pieces here and I'm going to lay this in place with our bevel just like that. So glue them all in place with 1 16th between each one and then when you get that done, come back and see me.
and we're just using a setup block here to help us align this piece in the middle. And all I'm going to do for that is uh, I'm just going to put a line across here so I know how to line it up. And then we can take those setup blocks away and glue that piece in the middle down. And there we have the top of our little project. And for now, we're just going to put this off to the side because we need to cut some more pieces for the bottom. Well, do you remember those pieces that we cut that were six inches long and three quarters of an inch wide and a quarter inch thick? Well, now that you're done making this section here of our project, you're going to need four more of these in the same color as the first ones you cut. So get yourself four of those pieces and as well cut yourself some three quarter by quarter inch in your opposing color as well. Well now it's time to make the seat supports and these last pieces of the ABS plastic that we cut here will be the seats. And I've also taken some of the blue stock at three quarters of an inch wide and a quarter inch thick. I've cut that again at that 30 degree angle on either side and made the long part of it five inches long. And all we want to do for these pieces is a little bit of CA glue here. We've got them lined up in our square just to keep everything lined up for us and help us along the way. And you just want to line this all up, place your seat supports right to the end, and again, half an inch in from the edge, just like we did on our table top and hold it there for a few seconds sort of thing and Bob's your uncle you should be nicely in place just like that. So all you want to do now is mount the other side of the seats and then your second stringer or your second seat support on the opposite side. <laughs> thing we want to do is use a two inch hole saw and carefully drill a two inch hole in the middle of each one of these sections of the top. Just be careful and take it slow. Now due to the nature of plastics and the heat generated from the hole saw, you will have a little bit of material around the exit wound here sort of thing that is melted. But it's very easy to remove, it's very forgiving. Uh, just with a sharp chisel, a little uh, carving knife, a pen knife, an X-Acto blade, whatever you want, you can just get in there with it and as long as you get a good sharp edge, it comes off relatively easily. We're not really using any force here. So clean up your two two inch holes and then we're going to move on to the next step. And there we have the holes on this tabletop nicely cleaned up. And to be completely honest here, the chisel did a great job at taking off the rough edges, but then I took it over to the spindle sander, the oscillating spindle sander, and went to the insides of these just gently light pressure, and man, what a beautiful job it did on cleaning them up and making them look nice and, nice and crisp and clean. So now that we have the holes done, we need to make the legs for that, and due to the design of this, we need to make it in two sections. So what you're going to need is some pieces of the blue material or whatever color you've chosen. You want it a quarter of an inch thick, half an inch wide, and we're going to use the bevels at 20 degrees, but the first bevel we need to do will be for this piece right here. Now what we have for the tabletop is our next piece, which will be 
one quarter of an inch thick, half an inch wide. It's roughly one inch long with a 20 degree bevel at each end. And we will be gluing those in place on the underside here, just like that. So glue one here, one on this side, and when we get all those glued into place, then we can place the seat assembly in place. Now, in order to glue the table together, you just need a flat surface to work on. Just apply a little bit of glue to each one of these legs here and once we get that in place put the cap back on line it up on your project make sure you have it facing the right way and just sit it in place like that now line it up side to side and you should be able to just hold it there and have everything glued together just like that. Now you can clamp it if you want. It's one of the joys of CA glue is the quick setup time. Or if you wish, you can use an accelerator where if you hold it in place and you're having problems with it actually adhering, give it a little shot with an accelerator and it cures it instantly. The only problem with doing that, of course, is that if you use too much accelerator, the glue turns bright, bright white. So you wouldn't want that on a really nice blue and red project like this. Now, there is a couple more pieces to cut, and the next piece that we need to cut for it, we need to flip this over, and we're gonna take a measurement from here to here. And what we need is another piece of red, or you could use blue. I'm gonna see what I have available here, but you just need a little strip, and that little strip will be glued in between these two seat supports on the lower half. And there we have that piece. I don't know the exact measurement. And for me to tell you would be pointless because yours is probably going to be different than mine. So just measure it. For me, I just held it in place and then placed a mark. This isn't um, really exact here. This is just a fun little project. So we're just going to glue this in place just like this. Just like that right in the middle, kind of line it up there as best you can. The glue is already setting on me. Hold it in place. I'm going to put a little bit of light clamping pressure on this just to help me hold it. So a little shot made F clamp here just to hold it in place just like that. And we'll let that set up. Now that that is in place, it's time to cut the final pieces, which are the last bit of legs. And for that, what we're going to use to give it a little bit of stability is some of this same material here, that quarter inch by three quarters of an inch long. And we're gonna need to set the miter uh, fence at 20 degrees once again. And the length is up to you. I'm gonna take some measurements and I'll let you know what I come up with. Well, truth be told, I changed my mind. And that's okay, it's my show. I'm entitled to change my mind. Instead of making these three quarters of an inch wide, guys, I went with half inch. And the reason I went with half inch is to keep some continuity here with the top legs that we've already cut. So it's just a matter of adding a bit of CA glue, lining them up on the inside so that they line up with the edge so that it looks like one piece cut through just like that. Glue these legs in place. And at that point, other than some light sanding around this piece, it's pretty much finished. So let's get those legs glued on. And one more here. Just make sure I'm putting the glue on the right face. just like that. And with those last pieces glued in, we have our little plastic picnic table. Look at that, it, look how, how adorable is that? 
Now you may be thinking, Kenny, what is the point of this? What is the point of those holes? What is the point of the whole project? I'll tell you what the point is. The point is if you're barbecuing and you're sitting outside to eat and you're out there and you've got company, what a cute little table accent than your little picnic table here with your salt and pepper shakers right in the top of the table. It's adorable. Guys, this is a fun little project, I'm telling you right now. And there you have it. A picnic table salt and pepper holder for your outdoor activities. Guys, this project is a lot of fun and I hope you're going to give it a try yourself. Now, having never worked with ABS plastics, there was a bit of a learning curve for me. And one thing I will tell you is, if you're going to be using your table saw, do not use a fine cut blade. Use more of a ripping blade. That fine blade creates a little too much heat and it causes melting of the material, which can cause you a little bit of an issue at that table saw. So a coarse blade is better in this case. Um, also, CA glue, fantastic stuff. I love the way that it adheres this ABS together and does it very quickly for the setup. So um, the problem with it, of course, is that if your piece gets glued into place and it's not where you wanted it, you've got a very limited amount of time to get that out of there. So you want to make sure now that when you line up a piece, it's right on the money. So. Here's the deal. Um, it's a fun material to deal with. And first impressions on it, I love it. I love the way the little shavings come off of it. And I'm already thinking of what I can do with those little shavings if I can melt them down and maybe make something. I don't know, maybe I'll try that a little later. So guys, I wanna thank everyone at uh, Omicrome Plastics for uh, introducing this product to me and I'm going to be posting all the links down below in the description so that you can get in touch with them if you want to get a hold of some of this material yourself. Guys, that's all she wrote for this week on another Alternative Tuesdays and I hope that you're going to join me next week and we'll see what it is that we're going to bring you when that comes around. Guys, hopefully I'll see you soon.